welcome to Gemstone Tarot. This is your daily tarot for 7th of November, Wednesday, 2018. Valley Bob, oops, Valley Bob's joins us. There she is. You can just see she's having a big old wash, preparing herself for a snooze. We are new moon in Scorpio. Scorpio. There used to be a really funny comedy program, which if you're in the UK, you've probably seen. I think it was called The Fast Show. And it used to have a weather woman on who used to say, it's going to be Scorchio, like that. The weather will be Scorchio. Always reminds me of Scorpio. Oh, okay. Right, so, oh, hello. There's a card on my knee. New moon in Scorpio. There may be some dark goodbyes, some dark and final goodbyes. Okay. Probably not things, that's a double negative, not things we're unaware of. It's a quite Scorpio new moon thing to do a double negative, so I'm going to go with that. Not things that we're unaware of. Okay. And then the next day Jupiter moves into Sagittarius, which it moves out of Scorpio, so it's kind of a bit of a whoosh, whoosh, happy in its home of Sagittarius. Expansion. It feels to me, astrologically, that's a bit of a pivot. As in, it's a bit of a kind of, the temptation may be to rush into something because of the goodbye. Now, mm, yeah. We get the fool in reverse and that says don't. <laughs> that says don't rush, you don't need to. It's a bit like when it's in the upright, the fool is going off the edge of a cliff with his little knapsack and his dog, but he has the, the zero. He is the zero of the major arcana. And so he's kind of got the blind faith that he will be caught. And because of that blind faith, he probably will be. Following the, the new moon in Scorpio, that blind faith may be a bit more like recklessness. So just something to be aware of, okay? Because it feels like from this reading that that new moon in Scorpio does trigger some slow building, decent energy for me, okay? Now, two nights in the reading, Mr. Plod and Mr. Okay, there's Mr. Plod on his shire horse and there's Mr. Blub, blub, blub. Off he goes. Let's go. Yeah, fire sign, a Sagittarius type feeling. Cool your jets if you can, okay? I would plump more for this, for Mr. Spreadsheet. And I'll tell you why. Because he's earthed. He's literally earthed. And next to him is the ace. And I feel like he's carrying that ace. Nice. And also, when all bets are a little bit off, it's better to go with the pentacle energy. It's better to go with the person who is steady and slow but sure. Because when you've got the ace of pentacles in a reading and you've got the knight of pentacles in a reading, that's a slow build. You know, in terms of investment, let's say, it would be a long-term investment. Aces are long-term. They're coming in, but they're also long-term. I always love the archway in this one. I don't know why, but I just feel really, really tempted by it. It always looks really nice. It's full of nature. Sometimes it has like a hair. Just an aside. And then underneath the Ace of Pentacles, the Ten. Now, all the minor arcana, of course, start with the ace, go through to the ten and go round in a cycle. Here we've got both. It shows longevity. The ten of pentacles is longevity. Here we've got all the generations. We've got the children, the grandparents, the dog, the house, everything. And again, we've got an archway. I don't know why. I suppose new moons are like a dark portal, not to get too Doctor Who about it, but it probably is a bit Doctor Who. And it just feels like a kind of beckoning forward into a more solid future. 
And um, for me as well, the Ace of Pentacles ties up with the eclipse. There's a new moon partial solar eclipse in Capricorn on about the 5th of July in 2019, where things start to be properly minted. You know, if we're talking pentacles and we're going down that pentacle road, I'm talking minting. Plop, you know, the coin coming out of the machine, looking all shiny and new and acey and lovely and solid and reliable and upright. This could start to happen as soon as in the time of Capricorn as well. Because then we finally climb out of those retrogrades, which seem to be making everything a bit... In amongst this, the King of Cups. Some people might be dealing with a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, or that in itself could just be the influence of the Scorpio full moon. It is a reigning card, as in R-E-I-G-N-I-N-G. -I -I My spelling is terrible, not reigning, but reigning. <laughs> is that my reigning mime? I'm reigning over you, okay. Because the King of Cups is a strange chap in terms of how he reigns. If you look at the other kings, you know, you've got the King of Pentacles who sits there with all the cash and all of the money and he's got his big pentacle and he's like, I show you the money. And then you've got the King of Wands who's like, ha, I show you my wand. <laughs> for now, for now. And then you've got the King of Swords who's a bit kind of, I'm cool and icy, don't cross me, I rule by the sword. And then you got the King of Cups, who's like, look, I've put my scaly slippers on. See that? He actually has scaly feet. And there's not much delineation between him and the sea. In other words, he kind of sits there with his dream face and his nice crown and his big cup. And he just says, I'm here and I'm part of the sea. It's a very passive, kingly power and it feels watery but nevertheless water erodes rock never forget that okay we've got all this earth water can erode rock that just feels like a message it's very much needed water can erode rock some of you this may be issues to do with mothers or fertility got the empress in reverse but also the Empress, if you look on the symbol, is Venus as well. And she's in reverse. And that has come up tons. That and the Wheel of Fortune in reverse has come up in private readings all the time. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. In the middle of the reading. Do I want that one too? Good. After tarot, we get justice. That feels good because also it's Libra and Venus has moved into Libra, albeit in reverse. Yeah, I like that. The beggar and the king both pleading with justice. And she receives them both the same. And then next to justice. What an interesting card. Three of Swords in reverse. Haven't had this for ages. So there it is in the upright. They fall out and it gets bandaged. This is the after tarot. That's even in reverse. This is old wounds as well. And that's what Venus retrograde's about too. But it comes up with justice, which I really, really like. There's some kind of karmic balancing here. Thank you, New Moon and Scorpio. How are you, Bally Bobs? Asleep, zonked. Should we be there now for a good two or three hours? Ooh. Oracle cards sometimes don't come across as powerfully as tarot cards, I think. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think. But sometimes they do. I'll go and contradict myself immediately. Not for you is a really important card. 
it's a chess game where there's a fortune cookie with nope and a 1970s serving hatch. For some of you, this is the Three of Swords bandaging and the rebalancing of a certain situation where there's been, I believe what the young people say, beef with somebody. And then there's this rebuilding of a life, which I really like. But just remember that fool card, fools rush in, I suppose they say. There's no rushing about any of this. This is all not planning for 2019. because You don't want to wish the rest of 2018 away. But it's certainly a marathon and not a sprint. Yes. Healing with the Angels Oracle card, we get focus. Focus on this. Only on the positive and what can be built. I like that reading. Do check out my pick a card readings. There's one for November, what's coming in for you. And there's a whole playlist if you want to have a look at those. And I'll be back tomorrow. See you then. Namaste.